Hey folks, Whip here, and welcome to my hardcore Minecraft world where I've survived 5,000 days. Okay, okay, I'm a little late on this video. I've now survived 5,173 days. So you get bonus content, okay? There's more stuff to look at. If you're unfamiliar with me, I love to build in Minecraft, and I have spent the entire 5,000 days just building things throughout this entire world. So we've got a ton of things to look at today. The building we started in front of right here is where it all began, my starter house and my shulker monster but we're gonna leave that this is oliver here at the front door guarding from any creepers to be able to come up to the front we have the kitchen with storage of all sorts in every single barrel up in here just random junk throughout oh an empty one wow i could put things there even the floor has turned into random storage and then we have the original storage room over in here underneath the staircase has turned into storage and then upstairs we have my bedroom and the first decorative pair of elytra i have i'm actually still wearing the original elytra i got which is fantastic over here leads across that little road that we have up into the top of the tower where we have the initial enchanting room actually the only enchanting room and there's a bunch of why there's so much gold in here what was i doing i don't know why there's gold in there but there is i'll have to come pick that back up later i must have accidentally put the boxes in there continuing down the road away from the house we have this little building down here that has turned it into my mind i still use this to this day to go mining as i love creating the giant caverns and just mass strip mine sections under ground on the outside that pipe actually connects into multiple floors down below where i can just drop items in and they automatically come up to the top here to be stored and then i can sort them and do things later with them then we also got a bunch of blast furnaces for smelting and then this mine cart here stops at every single optimal level for mining certain things whether it's coal iron copper gold diamonds whatever you want that stops at every layer and you can keep on moving speaking of which we can actually jump down here on this one and check out something i've redesigned more recently inside the world and first level here then we keep Keep on going to the second layer which i can't remember this is for and then we jump in another mine cart and keep going this way farther underground i'm gonna put my chest piece on i tend to not build too many things underground as i love to be able to look at them but sometimes you find something so perfect that you gotta do it for a triple spider spawner here which has turned into an amazing automatic string farm they just drop down onto a bunch of magma blocks and burn their little toesies and then we collect all the drops automatically we'll go over there to explore the city and the quarry and everything pretty soon but i want to check out the original things I built in the world first. Right in here, we have the sugarcane farm. If you can't tell by all the sugarcane planted out in front, it goes down this way to just an open room where I never really finished decorating the interior. So I got to do that as I still do come down here really often to get sugarcane. But down this valley over here, we have the first castle I built inside of this world. It needs a little bit of an update, but I do love the design of this thing. And I love how it just extends over the valley and just really closes in the entire environment that we've created. It. it's so fun to be able to look back and see this every single time and i think that was episode three yeah we did a whole castle for that down in the valley you can see a bunch of fields in there you can see the initial sniffers that we have over in that place and we have a sweet berry vineyard which we'll touch on in just a moment as there is something very important here inside of this castle well inside of the mountain behind the castle where we have the map room for the world something very very important to me episode three i made this map before building the castle that you can see right there then we have episode 12 where things are expanding down into a village extending down the valley over there coming to episode 15 where things have expanded even further then we get all the way up to 25 where the city has started the world tree is there and the world is just growing so much and it's turned down all the way down this corridor to episode 32 right here where we have another city expansion 37 here uh, I think that's again another city expansion and an uh, infinite number of fields are being added in over here the birch forest the map got extended because we have all these beautiful things over here with custom mountain range and then the final rendition here on episode 40 i don't want to be making maps all the time so i decided to even it off at 40 and then this is going to be where episode 50 goes i'm not going to grow the map anymore because uh it's already a massive amount of space and uh these item frames be a little laggy so we want to help that as much as we can but it's really cool seeing everything coming together in one location and just all of the different builds and i can't wait to see the next update because a lot of things have changed in the last few episodes and i do have a little secret exit we can fly out of right up here down into the valley where we have the sweet berry farm that has killed far too many sniffers than i care to admit but it's it's okay up here we have the sweet berry vineyard which is completely filled up of sweet berries if you couldn't guess and then down here we have the auto sweet berry farm itself where all of the foxes are doing a bunch of work uh we're a little overflowing at this point which connects down into the quarry here this is the place that i store every single type of rock inside of this world the building back here extends far into the side 
outside and we have a massive storage room kind of hidden in here inside of the environment. I like to spread them out so it gives me a reason to explore around the world and go look at what I made before. Sure, I could build some massive auto sorter that has everything, but then I never see like half of my world. They're just there as decorative buildings. So I like to give them a little bit of a purpose. So we got all those stones, cobblestones, deep slate, nether materials are at the back, tough dripstone, diorites, andesites, bricks, granites, and terracottas are in there. And then I have all the little workstations around and a mass place in the middle if I need to throw a bunch of shulkers down because uh, that happens. I'm definitely going way out of order on all of this, but we're just going to kind of loop around as a consistent loop so you can get a sense of how the world is developed together instead of just visiting little parts throughout it. So coming up this back gate here, come into the industrial district of the city, which I love so very much. It's still very much a work in progress, as you can tell, but we got a bamboo farm. We got a mangrove tree farm over here. We have a massive copper factory and aging facility where I love the workyard feel of this building so very much. So the idea is that all of the copper ore comes into here. I do have micro blocks in this world through wandering traders just as a little data pack. So if you see those around, they're just extra little decor, but it doesn't really change the game at all. So we got a conveyor belt that these things are all loaded onto get, get smashed into their copper. And then that comes up here and then drops down onto a cart ready for all of the raw copper. That raw copper is then taken into the back here and either stored there waiting to go into the furnaces or it goes right into the forges themselves. As all that stuff is cooked down, it's then brought over here to where we have the storage for all of the different pieces of copper being loaded up on these carts, whether they're staying in the factory to age down or they're going off somewhere into the world as it's all just kind of fresh copper. So we got a workstation in here. And then the functionality for the reason why I created that entire build was, well, I needed a place to age all of my copper. And that requires a massive room. We can age four stacks of copper in here at once. And you can see they're all completely aged down. I really got to come down here and trade it out. So we've got one layer up here and then a second layer down there where everything is four blocks apart. So it has the optimal speed to age down quickly. Extending further into the city here, we've got a bunch of custom trees that I love so very much. And I'm really trying to add in a lot of foliage and just presence in here besides just building after building. So coming around this back corner, we have a water mill that I made look very, very old compared to everything else in the district. I do try and theme the districts off of colors and things. So you'll see a lot of kind of like the deep slates in here. And so I purposely made this one out of the jungle. So it looks a little bit older and different. But inside we have a hanging root farm and a glowberry farm that we can start up. And then those are just running back in there. Bone meal goes on the top. And then you basically either you turn this on and shear it like crazy and then it keeps growing. Or this one, you just turn it on and just keep right clicking. You can you get a bunch of berries. That water mill does extend along a little waterway here that I love so very much that goes out into the river all the way down there, to just kind of cascading down from the mountain. This was somewhat natural of that water in there was there, but then it stopped there. So I just dug out the entire canal to get it all the way through so it could continue down and we could just split everything with some way of breaking it up and giving an excuse for a bridge down there. These are mostly decorative homes that still need a lot more decoration work done on them for their interior spaces, but we got a little outdoor work yard. I love giving them backyard gardens and things just so there's more stuff happening in here than adding in small little places like we have fresh cocoa beans right over in here at a little wagon back on the main street wrapping around to where this is meant to be like an inn of sorts and I want to come through here and just decorate the first floors like a bar kind of tavern set up and then the upper floor would be where all the bedrooms are but over in here we'll step back just a moment to this building the red mangrove bamboos bookstore to where we have a bar and bookshop inside that I love so very much and then we can come down this way and it has all of the storage for the crazy bamboo farm that we have down there. And as you can see, uh, everything from here, wow, there's still dirt inside of it. Everything here and over is pretty much filled up at this point. And I recently came back down and crafted a bunch of blocks to use. Turning back one step further, we have this courtyard area that I love so very much. This is meant to be like an older town hall of sorts for the lower section here that will work out. And I want to turn it into a way to access the mangrove tree farm down there as we currently don't have a way to do that. Then we built a horse here statue out of cherry wood just to do something fun and planted a bunch of coral for the fountain on the inside. This building here, I don't think I've ever mentioned it in a video, but my plan is to turn it into a foliage storage area with a bunch of market stalls representing different types of crops or leaves or different things like that. So we can fill this out really soon. And uh, I've already kind of stocking up on some of the flowering azalea leaves from the last round of expanding the world tree, which we'll look at in a moment. We've got a little butcher shop over there. We've got like a mechanics workshop in here. And then this is meant to be something that's just going to wrap around on a back street behind those with some more buildings along that side to connect into the gate in another path. My goal is to create a city that you can really get lost in. There's so many roads to move around. There's so many neighborhoods that you can keep visiting, but every 
everything has like a theme behind it. So everything down here is very industrial focused. As we're kind of moving up into that area, it gets a little bit more wealthy and everything in the center. And then we have the other side of the city up there that we'll be checking out here real soon. This building here is like a barracks watching over the back entrance, which will lead down to the harbor eventually. And that also connects over to the far side here where we have kind of old town original industrial district type stuff. This is meant to be like a blacksmith forge. We have a little house over in here that has a storage on the lower side. Right here, we have a little fish and chip shop, which I love so very much. Then we've gotten a little workstation right back in there of some row houses interconnecting that I just love the colors on them. Leading up this way, all the way up to the tippy top, we have our dirt and gravel storage in there. We'll look at in just a moment, but we've got some stables with horses in there. As this leads up the pathway kind of up into the mountain, I had this open section that was like, what the heck do I do up here? And I turned it into a really industrial brickworks area, kind of turning all of the clay and everything either into the bricks or the mud brick and all of that. So just a whole workstation in here. We also have a bunch of pots being created over here with the large pots being added in since the latest update, which I think are really cool. Then we have a bunch of coal storage back in there using some blackstone and coal blocks as if it's ready to be thrown into the fire to keep those running. And it looks like we're cooking down some copper in there and then also some bricks and things just to get a little bit more variety in what's happening in there. Inside the building, there is a very functional thing in here. Uh, we can turn dirt into mud and then dry that into clay over the dripstone. Well be back to fix that up soon closing the door hey look a storage room over here wow big distraction we have a really cool custom tree out the outside of oak tree i've been really trying to scale up my trees and to me now this feels small i really love how it looks but i want to keep making larger trees that are kind of bigger than the houses so i'm really going to keep working on that soon but inside we have all the different types of dirts this moss here is to represent grass because i didn't want it growing over the dirts and that goes all the way through these materials unfortunately i did forget about red sand so that is all stored up here where i I have way too much of it because I converted an entire mesa of red sand into regular sand, but we'll look at that soon. Coming down to the waterfront area, though, we have another warehouse of sorts down here, and the dried kelp signifies that this is actually the kelp farm. You can see some of that stuff is smelting down right now. We've got a bunch of dried kelp coming in here already and a little bit of kelp there just to have on hand. The thing is completely hidden underground, and I don't think I built a way to get down to it. Uh, so you'll just have to take... Oh, you heard it there. There's some pistons. You have to take my word for it that it's right underneath us. Coming out this way, we have a little chicken coop with some chickens hanging out in here and uh, free roaming chickens in a box. That's what the sign says. I absolutely love having that in there. Then we have a little outdoor forging workstation of sorts. We got some logs piled up. And then this building here was the one that we looked at from behind with a fish and chip shop. And it's just going to be some sort of dockyard storage room. I want to build out here a really large crane to bring materials up from the lower dock up to here and we do need to keep digging out the river to account for some boats you know we also need to actually make this river extend all the way out to the ocean but we'll get to that soon that's a that's a whole process yeah now we have this big old gatehouse that i mentioned earlier and it's going to stretch down along here to a lower district for the city kind of right along the water for a harbor area which i want to build up soon but i'm kind of focusing on connecting the two parts of the city first before you know i keep ex expanding aimlessly that way and that way i should probably connect them together this building that we started working on towards that connection is the armory contains every single armor trim in the game and some extras so I can keep duplicating them as I need to if I want to be making some more like we got silence right back in here ready to go and I kind of love the one I have but I have had this trim for quite a while and I'm thinking as we're getting into the fall it is almost time to change things up and add a new trim on here so we might be doing some stuff with silence I do love the gold on it that is really cool or is that copper I don't know but anyways I think I want to change up my armor trim every few months so I might be doing that here soon and we'll be back over the armory to do that now we can zoom our way up the hill to the original expansion of the city for this one I just love so very much walking up through the main gate so we'll start coming in here this is the main route to access the city the way we went in originally is the back route through the quarry so this is kind of how I envision you would walk into the city I absolutely love the design for this gate and the block palette in it is just so very fun we've got some more cats out here to defend event against creepers walking in most of this on the inside is spawn proof whether we're using beacons or lanterns or some torches and glow like and scattered around it is all turned into i think it's like 99 percent spawn proof there might be some corners i missed but we have the main street right here which is so very beautiful we have a wagon storage building right over there for people coming into town to park their wagons we've got the inn right across the street and most of these actually do have interiors on the first floors of them 
I'm kind of treating this like an RPG of something where I want the player to be able to walk into and see there will be an interior space. But then when we get into the upstairs areas, it's not something that you can see from the street side. So I'm just really not going to bother spending the time on it because it's only something that we would see inside the building. I want to be able to walk around and still see stuff like we can in there. And then also over in here, I think is really cool. But if there's no way to see inside, I'm just not going to put the hours into it because I could focus on other things. So we got a little tailor shop in here, their little workroom in the back. And then the staircase leading up to the top kind of it gets very blocked as it's going. But you can see the stairs through the fences, just kind of knowing it continues up there. Here we have the big old town hall in the center, which we'll get to in a minute. That one does have a complete interior for it. And so very cool. But over on the mountain side of the town, we've got the whole next back street built up behind the tavern. We have this little outdoor area where people staying in the tavern could come just sit out in the garden. Maybe they have some crops that they're using for cooking and everything like that. This is meant to be a bookstore in here where I do still need to finish off the first base floor. I want to continue this pathway around and link it back into a few more buildings and then reconnect it back down in front of the town hall there. So that's kind of a future expansion plan. Over on this side, we also have another pathway that leads kind of up there. Right now, it just goes into the second floor of this house, but it might continue up into a few more houses right back in there, which could be really cool kind of working up the mountainside. This is meant to be like an adventurer's guild where we do need to work on the interior, but we have a little flower stand out in front of it. We have some pots over there, which I just think are really cool. The tower in the corner for the wall, and we're just occupying every little open space that I have with storage or some sort of farm or something like that. So right up against the wall, we have this little garden down here and a workstation with that. We're back up at the main gate now where we can continue past the wagon storage area where we have another little market stall in here where people are just selling some goods. A wagon there that is filled up with water from the rain. Looks like it won't be able to fill up anymore though. So that's, that's, that's cool. How can I get rid of a bucket of water real quick? We can water lock that. No, it's not full yet. Dang it. I can't empty it. <laughs> Wait. Aha. Just break it and replace it. Now we have another little garden back there with some mangrove leaves around with a little bit of oak trap doors, like a trellis holding it up of sorts. Right here, we have the stables as you'd walk in the city. So you can see how we have the wagon storage in there. We have the stables for their steeds that are pulling their wagons. And then when they're done there, they can go stay in the tavern. Everything kind of ties together with a loose story that you can infer. Inside of here, we actually have every single rideable ground mount. So we've got our mule, we've got our horse, we've got our wandering traders, our llamas, we've got our donkey out in the back we've got our pig and we've got our skeleton horse so i just want to collect all the things and they're all just back here so we got a little manure and then we have some food and some water for them to eat and then a way to get into like an upper storage lodge up there that doesn't have an interior on it quite yet coming up this way though i'm trying to use a lot of staircases and just variation in the way that you walk up things but back over in here i'm also trying to add in these random shrines throughout the world it's just something that's a fun detail to just decorate a blank wall that we have and i just think it adds so much without it really kind of having a whole a lot of words or explanation behind it you can kind of infer that something is going on here and i really like that little baby tree then we have some flowers and the little archway in here which connects ourselves into a blacksmith where there was a story behind this where it's two siblings are running the smith so they have one set up here and then they have a set up over here so they can both be working independently and then they have their coal storage they have their cart with the iron coming in and everything they could kind of need to operate the smithy this here is meant to be a carpenter with the living quarters upstairs and then the downstairs which you could access through there would be the workshop for them over here we have a bakery which i'm actually really excited to get to building soon i'm really really looking forward to that one but we got this little outdoor area and some cakes cooling on the side there and this currently just has an archway leading into a tower which will lead down into another pathway when we get on to those next expansions stepping back a minute here we have this winding pathway coming down along this house which has a wagon workshop underneath in the first basement floor and then just living area up on top but this is how we kind of get back to the inside of the stables we have that carpenter workshop and then we just have like a general backyard space between all of the buildings with a place for people to get some water a place for you to subscribe to flip Two, and then just this general storage thing that would be for somebody in here i don't know one of the people living there he has it we've got a light there to keep it safe and coming into this way we have that wagon workshop i had mentioned that is just detailed out with a lot of storage and just goods like i'm treating these as some extra wheels that they have that they could put on the carts the carts are being held up so they can work on them more easily and it just kind of all functions together next to that we have a grocery store over here which i really love the interior of on the first floor 
we've got some wet coral in there that has some waterlogged blocks below it to keep the coral alive and then we've got little produce stands over here with our carrots and our potatoes and if you hear the pistons firing we do have a farm underneath down here in the basement we have two melon and pumpkin farms that are doing a lot of work i'm not really in this area too much and they have filled up quite a lot of space for us which is really really nice to have moving on to day three of the tour you can see how this world has uh, lasted for two years now we have the town hall which was meant to be like a mansion of some official that lived in the city which after they passed away was turned into a communal town hall space with a bunch of meeting rooms and I love this place so very much on the inside I decorated the entire thing it's the first time that I really spent a lot of time on an interior build which was very very fun to do over here in this corner we have a little dining room that I love with the orange and some skull going into the warp colors and then the basalt in the ceiling just a lot of contrast in here that was my original bow it finally got to the point of near breaking because infinity bows are so much better than mending so you know uh we survived about 4,000 days with that one and then oh man I finally had didn't make a new one but hey I never ran out of arrows that entire time and we got the new one that uh, still needs a name over here we have a little office for somebody who would be working in the town hall back over this way we have a meeting room or another office for somebody no no this is a meeting room those are kind of just chairs people can sit at and then in here we have yet again another meeting room where all of the rooms have just been kind of transformed into more community spaces and I've themed them all off different colors just to make it a little bit more interesting and fun this way leads up into the garden which we'll check out soon and then we have another way to get into that dining room place that we had and then back here we actually have a kitchen which I really really like how this kitchen turned out it's just fun with a lot of different stuff happening around the place that I just I think it all works really well together and you can see up top I've hidden a few crops so it looks like they might have some herbs growing in the windowsills little storage section in there for everything we can need and just filling in the space underneath the staircase which takes us up to the second floor that is more themed around being a living quarters for whoever might still be living in this area so I kind of took this as like a little closet in here this room I decorated as my own bedroom if I ever need to come here but I'll be honest I don't think I've ever used this bed I still just go to my starter house I've got a little closet in here if I ever need to store some goodies and then an office space back in here if I ever you know need to do a little bit of thinking I've got it back in here and uh I can get away from everything look I only have a bare wall to stare at because uh we gotta terraform that mountain yep the view out this window is fantastic out of the bedroom and coming across the other side you can see all of the warped and we got cyan terracotta dark rosemary green and gray terracotta I want to say up top or maybe concrete I think that's terracotta I don't know but down here a full color transition into where we have like a kids room of sorts with a bunch of bunk beds over there and then we have a room dedicated to 1000 because this was the 1000th video I ever uploaded on my channel uh when I posted it so I thought that was pretty cool then we have a little like trophy room here with a set of netherite armor some swords diamond armor and some gold armor then we have some beacons and just wither skulls and stuff I just thought it was cool to look down the hallway and just see the netherite armor as it goes off into the distance with the cool scenic window behind it now this door leads to the garden from the upper terrace we've got a little section back here this is kind of referred to be like wine bottles of sorts that they have that they can kind of just chill out here and enjoy the lovely outdoor air custom birch tree right in there we've got a big old garden this is very much themed after like an Italian European garden vibes is what I was going for and I really really love it with all the different terraces so you have the middle terrace here we have the lower terrace here with a pond and some really manicured lawn space and a bunch of hedges which leads into this downstairs section back into the mansion there's the ground floor right there but we can come up to the next levels where we have a mini version of the world tree as if they took a sapling from that and have started to grow another one here it's much much younger so it, it is much much smaller but I think it's just really cool to be able to be here look at this one and then see the original one back there the real world tree up on the mountainside up here we just have a cool little decorative bit with some azalea trees right in there using some moss and tall grass just to break up the shape a little bit further and then we have this cool trellis building of sorts just trying to get some contrast in the colors that we have mostly as a way to hide the stone wall behind it because I wasn't a big fan of it but I wasn't ready to transform it yet I think that did the trick now that is this section of the world uh but we still got a lot more to look at like everything out over here in a whole nother region that we can go to out in front of the city for the people that aren't able to get inside we do have a small inn and stables section here where they can store some animals and then maybe there's a fee that you have to pay to bring carts and animals in the city as like a tribute 
commute of sorts and they can stay out here to get away from it but it's just not as nice of a place coming down from there we have three windmills that are all pretty much exact copies of each other which I just love for the background scenic view and we have so much farmland down here that it, we need a lot of way to process that along with that I also added this little mountain creek it just has a way to break things up and add in a little bit of blue that does go all the way down there into that pond these windmills are all the same and how they function but then when you get inside of them there are little details that do change between all of them which I really really do enjoy and they have different ways I believe to get to the upper floor yeah 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 right over here we can get up to the upper level and can kind of see how the mechanics of the windmill work I know it's not accurate but you know it's Minecraft so things not gonna move anyway so it doesn't matter continuing down the road we can kind of loop our way down here and really just get into the heart of the village and also look at the giant world tree this is something that if you have followed my channel I built the original one back about a year and a half ago I believe and then I was like you know what I really really want to change it and just add more so I spent the last like 100 days in this world adding about 60,000 leaves onto the top of it and it I love it I absolutely love this thing there's well over 100,000 blocks going into it and just to give a scale of how crazy it is leading all the way up here it's just absolutely full of leaves up to the tippy top there's still some more expansion we could do but I wanted to leave these actually showing at the top as if it's not fully alive because it is split in half so I figured it's okay to leave a little bit of thinness at the top of the canopy instead of extending it more and I thought this looked nicer and it kind of adds a little bit of a story element another story element we have up here is this airship which I absolutely love it's got a lot of color to it it's got a whole vibe to it because this is our star trader to get the advancement you have to bring a villager up to world height and trade with them and that was this guy and so we left him up here just as like an homage and recently built this airship for him which I just think is so cool I loved the design I want to bring more airships like that into this world just with some extra movement and life into here with the little slipstream behind it kind of shows it's just like cruising across back down to where we can continue the tour on foot though we have a bunch of fields as with every single episode I plant a field in the world which I love to do so very much then leading up this way you can see a mountain range that I've built by hand in the background we've got the giant monolith over there we've got a cool bridge right here that kind of continues down that way that we'll explore in a moment and here we have the original moss on log with a custom birch tree and this little farmstead we've got a small workshop station out in the back then just some homes these are mostly just like scene decorations so not all of them have interiors this one does because I wanted a place where I could just run in and sleep when I need to but we've got a grain silo in there that house doesn't have an interior here quite yet they've got a little well in the middle and then they've got a big old wheat field right out here behind them and you can kind of just see the views of everything coming in together I love playing with sight lines so like that blocking it is pretty intentional but then it encourages you to like keep exploring and moving around one of my favorite custom trees I've ever built is this guy right here which was so very fun and that leads us down into where we got a little cherry tree orchard I know cherry trees don't produce fruit but I just thought they looked cool so I wanted to do it it's Minecraft it's fine looping up back towards the starter house for now you can see even more fields coming in we can head out down this way to where there's a little fishing shack along that lake with a big old fishy hanging there on a spike or something like that up on the chain and then we've got the little fishing shack down there we've got a turtle farm that needs to be moved that's where I've been breeding a bunch of turtles for scoot when I need it and back this way if you haven't heard them right in here we have a bunch of sheep this is where we have an auto sheep farm with every single color of wool which I love so very much and we have a rainbow sheep if you can see him right up there above that is just constantly changing colors just as a fun detail just to put something inside of it back over here which I do need to build another one somewhere else in the world we have the mass sheep farm there used to be like three times as many sheep in here but I started lagging a little bit so I had to uh lower the population of the herd but if I need a mass of one color I just come in here and breed up a bunch more and then we can shear as we need to looping back up towards the starter house even further over there we have a greenhouse with an auto bee farm hooked up inside of it for honey honeycomb not honey only honeycomb here we have some villagers that are set up we have an auto carrot farm here how did you change those to beetroot how did you get your hands on beetroot sir well we had an auto carrot farm now it looks like an auto beetroot farm no this was potatoes this one is I'm breaking all of these I would love to know how this man found this beetroot because I took him directly out of the villager breeder and put him here where did you get these seeds who's the beetroot dealer stop following me stop you don't get to pick these up no 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 bad villager nope stop planting the beetroot stop it no beetroot I think he's just been slowly transitioning the field out because this is all the no stop it stop it 
Stop it. Don't give me that smirk. I see you. Oh my gosh, there's so much beetroot in here. Ah, the storage. I'm gonna have to come back and do this later. He has so many seeds that he needs to get rid of. Fine, plant your beetroot. I'll be back and I'm gonna steal it and I'm gonna put potatoes back here. Well, anyways, that's supposed to be a potato farm and over here is still a carrot farm. Okay, that's good. One of them is still working and they just have little auto storage systems hooked up underneath the villagers where I do eventually want to move them back over in here and do something more grand. Right now, this is where the villagers pop in when I do need to bring over replacements when we have somebody like beetroot guy causing issues. Across the way, we do have a big old beetroot farm and that leads ourselves back up the mountain to where we have a wheat farm. I mostly use fields for spawn proofing and they look fantastic, which is why I have so many of them. But right over in here, we have the original moss and bone meal farm, which is pretty light right now since I've been using a lot of it. But we we can get to that farm back through this door and you can see it all in the inner workings and everything up in here it's 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 technical i don't know how to explain it now back up we are actually at our starter house here where we have the original animal barn we have a chicken coop right over there over on this side is where i had the first sheep until i realized that they need grass and then we have pigs inside of there with a sheep and here in the back we have the original cow farm where i got a lot of steak to carry me through the first few hundred days my original horse and donkey were hanging out here in the little stables building that i created for them and then we can loop back beyond the starter house to one of the more final things to check up on this mountain before we move on to some new regions of the world which is the lumber mill you can kind of see us leading into that with a vibe here of all of the felled trees over there and then we have a cool customer tree and then we have the mill right along here which i love because i took the part of having water running out behind it so we get the movement of having a water wheel which powers this to where they can cut all the logs and then we do have a fully automatic storage building on the inside for all of the different types of logs any wood item that comes through that's not a log will end up in here and then i manually sort those into their respective barrels and go up as I need to. Unfortunately, I've never had so many logs that I've needed to fill all the barrels. One day I might, I don't know, I keep using too many. With the expansion of cherry and bamboo, they unfortunately did need their own little places right over in here because uh, I wasn't able to extend this out any further. I accounted for one extra and then mangrove got added and then um, yeah, I ran out of space. Coming down the mountain, back down to here, we do have that auto bee farm I was talking about with a little greenhouse and then the bees are back in here and then we get all of the honeycomb. It's out of shears right now, but I have so much honeycomb comb that I just haven't bothered starting it again. I also have a little bee breeding greenhouse right down in here. If I ever need to breed some more bees and move some beehives around, I can just do that. Usually waiting for nighttime before I walk in there because otherwise they kind of swarm and get out. Farther down the mountain, we have a little fishing village here along one of the lakes that I just wanted to add in to fill the space with something other than a field. So we've got a little home up there. We've got a storage building in here, another house there, and another house with an outdoor workshop in there with a small little dock area in front with the waterfall coming down a little gondola boat rowboat type thing in there and then we've got this little lake eventually i do want to connect all of the mini lakes around here up with like an underground water network and then give them a way to get out into the main area somewhere right over in there it kind of opens up pretty perfectly but here we're walking into the original town that i built i think this was my episode 10 project way way long ago of i just wanted to build i love to build and my goal for this world for those who don't know i always say is to build an interconnected connected fantasy world which means I need a lot of towns, villages, cities, and things to really bring that all together and create that atmosphere. So this was the first town along that mission. You can see the little market stall here in the middle. We've got a stables there, which has an overarching thing over here over the road into what is the inn. They have a little connected kitchen area, and then we'd have housing and places for people to stay all the way up above them. Underneath here, through this little place, we can get back into two little farmhouses for some locals to be living inside. Then down over here, we have, I think it was a sale maker workshop just to add something more mechanical we have every single type of cat in minecraft because you know i needed the advancement and then up here we have the harbor masters watchtower and their home kind of looking out over the harbor which is right down in here with a bunch of little tiny river boats that we have then we have more market stalls another little house and then a storage room here for all of the things coming in off of the dock which i just love i think it's fun to add all the extra details we have a little way to get down so you can kind of see everything happening down there a little pond of sorts right over here connected into the main river and we just have a lot more details and open space for people to be moving around which I really enjoy another small little neighborhoody cul-de-sac vibe of we have three little houses in here bunched around a well which I think is fun I'm trying to make these really feel like communities so a lot of little houses nestled in together shared outdoor workstations gardens little storage buildings and things like that
like that just kind of bringing all the vibes together i'm realizing right now this video is going to be incredibly long so uh buckle up as we move towards world spawn which actually is that building right over there and then i set up on top of the hill up there because i want to be up in the mountain but we have a lot more fields in here just for some extra decoration a few little farmhouses scattered around and just a lot of life happening we've got a wagon right in there a bunch of custom trees in the area which lead down to a way to get across the river which we'll go to in a moment but up here at world spawn i recently set up this little market stall for fun and then that leads over here on this road to a little farmhouse and some more fields if you didn't know there's a few fields in this world but up here is something even more important of we have the sniffer ranch i love sniffers and i love plants in minecraft so when pitcher pods got added in i was like i need sniffers somewhere central where they're always gonna be loaded in and they're always gonna be producing those beautiful little pitcher pods there there it is so we've got a ton of these dudes in here that are running all over the place just sniffing seeds up all the time underneath this entire flat area is a minecart that runs around constantly to pick everything up and then that dude actually will drop everything off here inside of our mcdonald's and they have been working overtime oh no that's that's not all we also have torch flowers in there we have torch flowers in there we have pitcher pods back in here i've got a lot of them now but i didn't want the ranch to just be here on its own we also have the torch flower field back there we have a few bees in there and the the ranch building itself i really really love but it does look a little bit like a mcdonald's but it's fine over here i wanted to add in some houses for like ranch hands of people who are helping to manage all the sniffers and everything in there just adding some more life to the production element behind it then we have an old classic inn here that's a little bit run down as you can see as this thing actually houses a cactus farm this is kind of what i consider world spawn world spawn realistically is actually that crafting table right there but i think it's these four torches but that was the first crafting table i placed in the world the place where it all started was right in there right over here this is kind of like a really simplified version of my channel logo you can kind of see it a little bit there of the hair and then the like the hand and the arm and the face and everything i don't know i like it and then we have a little house in there we have the original iron farm up there we've got our moss farm over in there because the original one wasn't producing enough and inside here you'll be able to see that the iron farm is uh is working it is working very very well this is just a tiny tiny little thing that's the entire farm and that has supplied more iron than i could ever need inside this world continuing down beyond world spawn we can head over this way across a little bridge with another mountain little stream creek running down all the way into the river this pathway continues on to right now where i have a mushroom tree farming zone and then all the way over here i haven't decorated much along that road yet as it was very important to lead out into my mud brick castle i'm never out here as you can see i planted this field a few episodes back and it still hasn't grown Ooh, that one grew but i really wanted to experiment with mud brick and instantly it made me want to build a castle with it so we built this really cool block palette and everything coming in here as a castle of sorts to guard the main river entrance so we've got this little water gate of sorts when they want to allow boats through they can drop it down into the water otherwise boats won't be able to move beyond it too easily and once i expand that river right over there that connects to the ocean that connects to everything else inside of this world so you can kind of see a little bit of the story coming together a bunch more custom trees up there which actually underneath these custom trees right inside here we have an auto wheat farm that has a bunch of allays and villagers and bees inside of every single one of those places and the allays are in charge of picking up wheat and dropping it there in front of the hoppers all of that is constantly being routed right over in here into this building that stores all of the wheat and there's just so much in here it is absurd how good that farm is but with that we can finally move across the river to the other side where we have a custom birch forest when minecraft started the ideas of the wild update they showed some fan art for a custom birch forest or a revitalization of the birch forest that i just fell in love with so as soon as it got announced that it wasn't happening i wanted to build my own rendition of it and i built this in entire forest we've got a little forestry person living here in the middle of it kind of somebody who would be like a witch or maybe just somebody who lives out in the woods and just kind of like an herbalist of sorts living out here they've got a little dock i did put a bunch of frogs in this lake but they've all disappeared at this point i don't know where they've hopped their way over to continuing down the road we find this little lodge over here that is a bit more of like a hunting lodge and we have some good boy doggos sitting out in front of it i put a bed in here just in case i need to fly in and sleep really quick and and then that kind of continues our way around as I wanted a building to really block the path so that you can really instantly feel like you're fully within the environment of the forest as it does start to thin its way over here 
and it thins out a good amount. As soon as you pass through this archway, you are exiting the birch forest and you're coming into my next custom biome project that I built up, which is just so very fun. You see, we have a little farm settlement right out here of just somebody living along the road. They've got their beetroot field. They've got their sunflower field right over there. And I want to put another farmhouse right in here. We've got some llamas tied to the tree because they won't stop spitting at me. I don't know why they started doing that, but we've got a really cool custom biome over here that I built up. If I wanted to recreate a plains biome and make it very open open but still feel very unique and full of life but just not too much going on so you can see a lot of work spent on the texturing of the ground little patches of flowers throughout some warped goodies being added in here and then a lot of life really corresponding to the edges of the water coming down which is kind of like a mystical spring coming down from the mountain over there which we'll check out in just a moment i really wanted to try and channel the idea of a river delta i split it a bunch of times in different directions would much be a little too on the fantasy side but I, I think that's okay. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I think it looks pretty good. Then right over in here, we have my original raid farm of where I got my first totems of undying. Uh, I patched it up and removed everything from it, except uh, the villager who's in there. So I want to give him a home, but it used to be able to just like trigger a raid. There's a thing in here that would drop all the ravagers and things down and I could be down there and kill them safely. I did come out of that with building up this entire custom mountain range just to have a cool backdrop and continuing on from the vibes that we have with that guy moving up to here. I really love the texturing for it. We're using everything that you can imagine. Uh, here's all of the blocks in here. We have tough block. We have basalt. We have acacia log. We have coal ore. We have stone. We have light gray wool. We have light gray concrete. We have moss. We have grass. We have grass and flowers. And we have trees and everything on top of it. There's a lot going in on the front side. Not so much on the back. But I want to use terraforming projects as ways to differ the biomes that I'm working on. Any custom things. So all the trees are kind of blocking the sight line. I build this world very much from ground level to be explored on foot and so as soon as we're on the other side of the mountain range it really opens up into doing something new because you're not going to be able to see through the mountain to see all this it kind of is a very natural barrier to have something different now this obelisk is kind of like an ancient force that exists within the world I don't really have too much lore explaining it or anything like that but I wanted to have it in here as just building ancient structures and allowing you all who are viewing the world to kind of make up your own stories about what's happening in here this thing is just a fancy excuse for hiding in a gas farm that brings in from the nether so we have tons of gas tears in here and uh not too much gunpowder because i keep using it continuing on from the birch forest we come into another region that i love so very much over here was a flower forest biome which i used to create a bunch of flower farms and dye farms and everything from there so on top of that i decided to turn this into a massive area of different tulip fields just to fill in all the decoration and then this was a village itself right next to it so i transformed the village to be something more fitting the flower forest vibe well hit that up in just a moment as coming over here I've got a nether tree farm set up I don't like to build full tree farms of everything and anything because I enjoy the process of gathering materials in this world so this here is nether trees I just found were too annoying to gather and the only way I was going to actually build with them was well if I uh decided to make the trees myself so if I decided to auto farm the trees, otherwise I wasn't going to be bothered. So this way I actually open up having those blocks to work with. And we can come down here to where we have an awesome horse breeding area and horse racetrack. And the horses are just phasing through the fences to get out. All of these are the horses and uh, a lot of them are gone now that I use to be able to get the fastest horse possible in Minecraft, which I'm pretty happy to say we have multiple of them now inside of the stables itself. To get golden carrots to breed the horses, we've got a few farmer villagers back in here ready unlocked and everything like that as we need them and then inside the stables building itself you can see all of the different horses in here this one is a 4.2 and I think the fast is technically 4.22 and then you can see we have a bunch of 4.2s in here and then this guy's also a 4.6 jump or the fast like the highest is like five point something so you can see all of these are maxed out on speed I'm still working on the jump but you know at least we got the speed locked in and one day I will get the fastest mule which means I also need to get a max speed donkey and then breed that with a horse and then get the mule uh yeah we'll we'll get there eventually over here we got some bleachers set up so you can watch the racetrack which i built into a massive race all the way around here that goes down and everything like that it's got a built-in timing system and everything which i think is just so very fun to be able to look at which is all built out of that so when you run across there's a little string right there that starts the timer and then when you hit it again that ends the timer 
So you can see I've got a whole counting system over here revolving around blocks of dirt. So when the timer starts, it starts dumping dirt down into this, and then you just have to move it back up there to reset it. We've also got a much shorter horse race track right over here for us to speed test individual ones with string right there and string down at the end. So we can just sprint and run and see which is faster. And then of course the jump test area right over here. Just so you can see it when we jump over here, that'll start lighting up. And then you can see all of the redstone lamps going around, just kind of showing that the race is on, which I think is really fun. And then as soon as you finish it, that should stop. And then we have fireworks launching off at the end. That's just like another fun added element. Jumping across the river, we can come into the flower forest village from the backside as we've got a lot of really cool flower farms back here. Every single one of the buildings you see is actually housing a different type of flower farm. If you didn't know, you can bone meal a space in biomes and it'll, if it produces a flower, that flower will always spawn in there. So this is a bunch of tiles in here that produce pink tulips right in there. Over here, we have all the orange tulips. That is our white tulips that produce light gray dye. And then over there, we have the red tulips. You can kind of see the color accents being thrown in there. I also have one back here for azure bluets and alliums that I still haven't hidden, but you know, that's back there as they're very, very old flower farm. We have a small graveyard here for the villagers that have passed away since we started building it. Thankfully, there's only one grave in there so far, but we have this really cool village that I've been able to throw together. We got a little stable section in there. Kind of, I love doing this thing with the stable connected to an inn and then you have like an overpass as it really just feels like you're entering something I absolutely love that so I do that quite often and I tried adding in a bunch of color throughout here so we have banners running across all that stuff we come here into the middle of the market every single one of these houses they don't really have full interiors inside of them it's a lot more just workstations and things and just places for villagers to be hanging out so we can get some extra detail in there and actually have the villagers be able to like run inside the different homes so like we have the butcher working inside of here and then there's a small workstation area of market stalls and things here in the middle where I just couldn't find a home for him. So I wanted a Fletcher. So he's in here. We got a shepherd over there. And then we also have a weaponsmith right in there just producing some tools. And then here is kind of the shrine of the world tree. I don't really do too much like religious anythings inside the world. I just it's not something I enjoy building. So in here we I go off the idea that uh, everybody worships the world tree and like praises saplings from it. So this is like a baby version of the world tree of a very, very tiny acacia sapling in the azalea bush up on top that they're kind of worshiping and building the shrine so it can continue growing. So if something does happen to the world tree, there are extras. I just realized my clouds were off this entire time, but look at the vibes. It makes it so much better. This loops ourselves around to the front of the village where we were looking at it originally with the bridge and the water mill and, and everything. And then here we actually have a daylight sensor hooked up to a bell. So every time the night comes in, the bell will chime here and all of our villagers go to bed. But every single one, like there's our stonemasons. I believe this is for our leather workers inside of here around the back. No, they wouldn't come all the way over here. So I moved the leather workers into there but this is like the work yard that they have. Then we do have another weird little shrine thing right out here for maybe some ancient worship point that is still just around. And I've fully customized the entire bottom of this river and done a little bit of foliage along the edge just to create a really, really cool atmosphere. And this continues into some more fields over that way. And of course, more fields over this way with a few bees living in the middle just because I thought it would be fun. That road doesn't go anywhere up there, but this road does continue on to the next section that we can go check out. A project that I've been very recently working on You'll see that this road is very, very long though. It goes along the bridge, comes through this birch forest here to where we actually stumbled upon a trail ruin right down there that I didn't even know was there until I was building the road. And I was like, wait, what the heck? That's some red terracotta. So that's down there, which we can decorate some more eventually later on. We have a small farmstead right here along the road, just has some fun decorations that we have. And they have some sheepies living inside there, a small grain silo, and then the house. And of course their big old wheat field, because I had to throw a field in. Extending out into the savannah biome we have a village that i decided to just go on through and continue the road through that which leads ourselves over here to where the road picks up again and goes through an old ancient ruined structure some sort of a castle of sorts or a fort that was blocking this road way way long ago but now it's so crumbled that it's just kind of as the way the villagers walk through the wall barely even exists anymore because the villagers probably when we eventually get to transforming that probably we're taking stones out of this to build their own houses because this wasn't really needed anymore but i do need some more rockets i love redoing minecraft villages and the cool part is we actually connected to another village right here just by chance getting our way all the way over to the desert biome i also built this custom ship off of the coast out there that i think is pretty good i'm trying to improve my ship building skills 
and we are uh, slowly getting there. But finally, we transition into a jungle edge biome with a jungle up here on top of a mesa cliff that I love so very much and into the desert itself. I picked this place out as the next build project I want to do because I was just so in love with the mesa here we've got this little entrance into the mesa as like a traveler's rest point before you continue on so you're leaving all the green behind and you are entering the desert where you might be like flip this looks a little weird i thought mesas had red sand um they did this has regular sand now this there's there's no more red sand out here and this river was really expanded like crazy i'm using that currently to farm some grass when i need to because no flowers grow out here but we've got this beautiful jungle on top and then the regular sand extends all the way back around here just into this really cool lush river atmosphere that I just have going through the desert, which I think is so fun. And then the red sand, I kind of stopped right over there. I removed about 60,000 of it. So uh, we'll pick that up later when we want to continue it. But this whole thing is just so lush coming along here. I just think it's so absolutely beautiful with the palm trees going and all just the fun nature -y vibes. We need to come back through and work on the underside of the river and just kind of finish up the riverbed itself. But for now, I've been focusing on really continuing into the desert where the road transitions out of our dirt that we have outside this place and moves into something that is much more desert friendly something not too dark as the road goes farther and farther into the desert a few more fields start popping up throughout here so big old sugarcane field we have a crimson root field that's like some saffron or something like that and then we have a little fork in the road there we're going to continue this way for now as we go across a little bridge here over the river itself and we come into what was a minecraft village i've kind of rehomed a lot of the villagers here i left that house because I liked it and I think I'll redo something with it later. Then I left these houses up here on top of the hill because I want to transition this almost into like an old school like fortress of sorts looking out over the river. But originally the village was here. It completely blocked the river so they had to go so that the river could come through obviously so half the villagers were rehomed over here into this little hamlet of sorts where we have a bunch of crop fields and like a whole water irrigation system where they're able to take the water up out of the river and move it here into the dirt to make it something that they can actually grow crops on we have an auto carrot farm right in there where he can drop things off in that building we have an auto potato farm right over there where you can see him dropping off potatoes right now thankfully that one hasn't been changed out to beetroot and that leads back into this little village that was built first and foremost as a a village just to add some extra decoration around it and then it turned into some more functional stuff but i just love the vibes inside of here i just think it's so very fun and there are loose villagers so we should definitely sleep again right here we have a beautiful vertical windmill that i love so very much we've actually got a few of them we have another one right there and it looks so cool but inside of this one more importantly around all of the working equipment down in the base is where all of those carrots and potatoes come together i know i have some auto farms for this in the old world but i thought it'd be fun to kind of add those elements here as well so we got that coming down in this little cool storage room out the back we have a little outdoor cooking station because they don't want to make their houses any warmer than they already are so i figure most of the cooking happens outside we've got a few beds in here for some villagers and a little water place where they can get some a drink of water throughout the day or allow the animals to stop and that continues over to here to where we have that house and then we still need to continue working on the end of this little peninsula within the river peninsula is that what it is i don't know maybe it is but the other cool part we have here is the camel death sanctuary which is so very fun you can get in right through here through the bamboo fence gate and it's so very cool we've got two camels inside here right now that are currently under uh a close watch we could say as one decided to walk into this cactus and die little did i know cactus the thing you feed camels so that they can breed also will kill them if they walk into it and their ai tells them to walk into that thing and sit down so they just sit there until they die i built this nice beautiful oasis for them but they can't use it because they keep killing themselves but more importantly down here in the center of it we have the almighty sea pickle farm i wanted to use pickles as succulents okay so i built a crazy sea pickle farm that makes ninety thousand pickles per hour and uh i've got more pickles than i could ever need now along with a bunch of little budding amethyst shards and things like that we have a lot of really cool succulents and life throughout here dead bushes we've got these we've got torch flowers sitting in flower pots we've got Got flower pots we've got the little amethyst bits and it's it's a little chaotic but i kind of love that it creates a very mystical feel throughout here it's so fun now you might be like what how much more do you have to show us well we've probably got another few thousand days of stuff that i still haven't shown you all so we got a lot more things to look at we this roadway currently goes to nothing actually it kind of does now that we have the axolotl sanctuary built up but this is kind of where i've ended the desert project for now i'll be back to expand it very very soon in the near future i'm sure but over here we have a blue axolotl there's booger 
Joker himself, the first blue axolotl, and he's got a little family. They've got this cool blue axolotl bazaar in here with some prismarine like tapestries over the top and just a really cool place themed around just kind of allowing the blue axolotls to be forefront and center that took like 30 hours to get one you definitely don't want to try it but maybe you do it took like 30 hours though so it's a lot of time and then over here we have my first boat that i've ever built that's large that i'm really really happy with how it turned out i tried to not build what i thought a boat looked like and just tried to build something cool so we've got this weird little like beak element on the front to it and then all the fun colors working in and i'm just happy with how the result came out in the end eventually this whole place over here is going to be turning into a massive city for the desert region of new papyrus and we're gonna need another boat in there and we're gonna probably have some boats out in the middle just make it look like a really active harbor but over on the far side of the river we have the smaller harbor for more of the local people in here this was a complete village that i created and i've had a heck of a time trying to get villagers to actually live in here so uh some are in here but i can't seem to get them to breed even though every single one of the houses has at least a bed in it but we've got another cool little sail makers workshop over in here for all of the boats going Going on we've got the central market of sorts with a really cool fountain that you can actually walk down inside of and walk out the other side we've got some camels hanging around and this is kind of the front entrance to the place you really walk in and see it from here first and foremost so we've got a little kitchen restaurant of sorts right over there we've got another little set of row houses <gasps> there's a baby villager they are breeding oh i'm so happy oh you're all stuck in the water <sighs> This is why we hate villagers. Anyways, we have this really cool row house right over there where five or six villagers can live inside of it, which is pretty fun. They've got some smaller boats and there's another villager in the water uh, right out here for fishing in the local region. And then this is all my shulker storage mess inside of this room, which is uh, we'll organize soon. Out the front of the village itself, we kind of get this cool entrance leading inside of it again with that archway theme of walking into a zone. I don't want to put like gates everywhere because I want it to be free and flowing in and out of the place so we kind of just have these archways signifying you're going inside something over here we have a little camel stables of sorts out in front or horses if they're able to brave into the desert then over here we actually have a shipyard where those little tiny boats are being built up for the river boats we have this really really lush river edge along here that's so fun but you can see the two boats being built in there together and then they just be rolled out along these logs and then out in here where the villagers could use them with a little melon field this road connects all the way back into that fork in the road that i mentioned previously and that's kind of everything we've done in the desert region so far it's been about five six hundred days working out here that has just turned into this massive just change of the desert that i love so very much it's really really cool seeing it come to life quick little stop over here at that boat that we previously passed by on the road you can see it all in here with the cherry we got the pink we got the orange and i just think it's really fun it's got this nice little place where we can come down and sleep if we need to and ender chest if i ever need to grab some stuff and then we just kind of zoom on away from it but i think it turned out pretty well now if we continue down the coast this direction we can fly out into the ocean a little ways to where that island loading in means we're close and yes there it is my ocean monument transformation i needed a prismarine farm and i didn't want the thing to be ugly i like to hide all of the redstone stuff i do inside this world so it turned into this which i love so very much the perfect circle here in the center looks very very good everything is kind of seamless going around the entire place it's almost kind of like a terraced cake leveling up as we go up to the tippity top to where on the front we have a nether portal that will take you to the nether roof itself and then all the way up here at the top the tower actually reaches up to where we have an afk point this well up there is the proper point to afk for the guardian farm to fully function these are all living coral roofs meaning on the inside of it is completely filled with water now the guardian farm itself is all the way down in here where we can get in you can see the guardians falling into the center that we just spawned in when we we're up top We've got this cool little entryway with a lot of coral inside it. And then we can drop down here to the disgusting storage area of the farm itself uh, that I probably should lower down another few blocks and it'll be so much better. I'd love to keep expanding this project eventually and kind of building a water city out here. So that's why I left that section open to build almost like a dock leading into the section of where we have this big mass structure. But that'll be in the future as this was a massive project to undertake. And I love how it turned out, but it's definitely one that I need to chip away at slowly from here we can jump into the nether to the beautiful nether roof that we have up here with a massive gold farm right over there 
we've got the gas farm that we've already looked at the output point for it we've got a hogland farm right down there and then if you continue along that ice boat pathway all the way down we have a frog light farm and a magma cube farm itself so we can pick out whichever items we want to be farming and then here around the center we have multiple piglin bartering setups so that i can stop here and trade away all of the gold that i get from the farm all the way down there and turn it into all of the good bartering goodies i would love to expand this place and build it up even higher so we can create a whole environment up here and i'm kind of gearing up for it but i don't have a super concrete ideas yet yes i did blow up all of that bedrock with the t <laughs> with the bedrock breaking method using pistons to be able to get all the way down here and just have that portal to go in and out of the nether and then we've also cleared all of this for a wither skeleton farm in the center we've got a little blaze farm right over there that i definitely need to spawn proof a bit better on the outside because now that we have this open place it's a little spooky there but if we hang out here for long enough all the wither skulls should should be able to come down we can kill those infinitely get all the experience repair all of our goodies and we get so many bones so much coal and so many wither skeleton skulls out of this that i just don't even know what to do with all of them at this point right wings are repaired which means we can head on to the next stop as a very important element that i want to do on the nether roof here is connecting up the different portals that we have as they're a little lackluster for now just sitting on the roof but i really want to make it something special and it's hard to position something that'll be able to connect to all these without it looking a little weird but this one as you can see leads ourselves into the stronghold here that i would love to transform one day as this will lead us into the end dimension where the end island looks a little bit different now i killed the dragon 20 times to reveal all of the different portals going all the way around and then we removed all of the obsidian pillars destroyed all of the end stone and then came back in here to build the tree which is just here floating in the void and i'd love to do something on top of it to really change it up and make it that much more special but here you can see we have the original end portal itself so we can get out the dragon egg is sitting here for now but i would love to repurpose it and move it somewhere else and then this whole setup in here is just for killing withers inside of the bedrock so that they can't escape and they can't kill me it's great over on that side we have a skulk farm that we built up i believe it's a raceworks design and then over here we have the enderman farm that i can also use for experience as i need one of these portals i could not tell you which one i thought it was that one it's not but one of those leads to somewhere out there there is a wither rose farm that um i don't know where it is but we'll have to find it again one day so if you have any ideas uh let me know which portal that goes through because i would actually love some wither roses soon i feel like there are definitely builds that i'm forgetting that we haven't visited yet but i can't even remember where they are we've been in this world for almost two years at this point and we have built so many really awesome amazing things you can see us coming back into the spawn region here and i just want to say thank you all so very much for the support on this entire journey and I'm really excited to see how much more we can push this with the world moving forward. So with that, my friends, be sure to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're brand new. If you made it this far, you watched the entire world tour. So that probably means you enjoyed it. And my friends, I'll catch you all on the flip side.